going to give you a quick um, project update of my botanical sketchbook. Um, so this week's assignment has been all about fruit and I'm just going to quickly show you what book I'm using to do my little project. So um, a while back I bought this book called The Botanical Sketchbook and inside they've got lots of really great, um, well basically how it's designed is you kind of um, so they have the table of contents, they have different topics and it's kind of like you're reading the dialogue between teacher and student um, like the teacher is like a very f well known um, I think famous or well respected botanical artist and then she teaches like classes, regular classes and um, the author of this book is just one of the students that she taught so I think Marianne Scott with Margaret Stevens is the uh, author slash teacher, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, I was just flicking through this book and I absolutely love all the illustrations and I thought, hey, maybe I could do something like this just so I have some kind of like goal to go by. So anyway, so I'll just quickly show you. So that I, at the moment I'm on assignment five, which is fruit. So you can see lovely pictures of fruit there. And yeah, I'll just quickly talk about like my thought process, how I approach this. Um, so you're supposed to look at different artists' work and go from there. Just kind of get an idea, some inspiration. So the first piece I did was actually um, some okra, which I know it's technically not fruit. But um, what I really like, I just thought okra was really interesting and um, like you quite something quite easy to do and also I could use and it's actually the first time I used masking tape masking tape? I keep calling it masking tape but it's actually masking fluid sorry guys um, and I used the masking fluid to paint in these little seeds and um, this is a really fun project and it got me it was easy to start with because I could just really concentrate on one colour and get the light source right and and the tones right and everything like that so that was a really fun thing to start on so you can look closely so yeah um, after, that, after that I was kind of on a high and I was painting this um, what's it called? Mioga... I f completely forgot it's kind of like I don't know it's a, it's a special Japanese vegetable and it's used if you chop it up it's it's kind of like a seasoning for rice and stuff and sushi, but um, I it's I just totally failed. Like I don't know what what wrong. I just really wasn't really feeling it, so that was kind of a fail. But I got the colours right at least. <laughs> I was trying to go for the wet and wet technique, but just totally failed. And then on to the next. So I finished that one, and then I tried to use. Um, this sketchbook, which is the artist drawing Maruman 300 GSM watercolor um, paper sketchbook. So I'm just going to fast forward to. I mean, this is just some like rough stuff, nothing to do with my project. Um, maybe I'll edit that out. So th this part is the. I bought some figs from the shop recently because I absolutely love the green lime color against the kind of maroony, burgundy, mahogany, purpley-ness of it. And also I was having loads of fun with the masking fluid too. So what I tried to do is get to grips with the wet on wet technique. And um, I did a tea wash of like a very pale green and um, tried to go over it with masking fluid again to get the little dots. And then paint over it with um, varying shades of like burnt amber and red and magenta and purples um, but what I got wrong was I tried to take the masking tape to off too soon so that's why there's bits of paper that um, got rubbed off by um, cause I was by the rubber and also the light sources I completely like couldn't con lost control completely of the paint cause my paper was too wet and at least this is just a practice, it's not the final one, but I learned my mistakes from this one. Um, and again I had the same problem, just lack of control 
I couldn't really understand the form of my of the figs very well and the light source as well I just couldn't really grasp it and I just didn't really know how to tackle this um, but again it was just kind of like lack of control because my paper was too wet when I was working with it and so I just tried to start with basics so I went with the lemons um, lemons are a nice round shape and it's quite easy to work with um, round shapes and lighting so the light source is coming from up here and then as it as um, this edge curves around it gets actually lighter because um, the light bounces from this ed edge to there something like that with the light source um, so I actually really like the contrast between the dark brownie colours with the yellows but um, what I found really interesting was to make the yellow a bit more orangey yellow or eggy yellow I mixed a little bit of magenta and that kind of changed it completely so that was really fun and um, and I know like my work isn't really following all the botanical illustration rules for example the shading that I added um, most botanical art doesn't actually have shadows in it from from the light but the only shadow you'll see is from on the actual object um, but for this I to get the how do I explain the high contrast lighting reflecting basically the shininess I just used my Tipex pen which is not with me right now but I just use a Tipex pen just to I think in America you call it white out just to like highlight all the areas here and, and I thought that was fun. Also I noticed that um, the cross section of the lemon seeds is actually purple. I didn't know that before so this really forced me to stay, stay away from just brown, brownies, brown colours to do shadows but instead to focus more on like deeper oranges, yellows and greens to try and get the shading in so that was interesting. You can get a close-up there. This is my favourite one because I actually didn't realise it would turn out this well, um, better than I expected. <coughs> um, I, again, like rounded shapes is a lot easier to paint because of the lighting. I have a, I feel like I've got a better understanding of lighting just with simple rounded objects. And um, with the, these grapes, the Japanese groups, they have actually really strong like magenta hue to it and on one side and then kind of in th in th like on the other side they, they are really dark violet purp like purple or deep blue so they kind of vary in colour um, just in one grape so I tried to capture that because um, especially in the because grapes are transparent um, to the light. When the light shines through it actually you'll get these really strong vibrant light um, magenta peeking through. So I just what I did is I kind of stayed true to the colour and just didn't even mix it but splodge it straight onto the painting and it kind of worked is quite effective. <coughs> Sorry I'm talking a bit too much. But um, what I'm really proud of the most is actually the water droplets because I've never actually painted water droplets before until now and some of them have turned out really good and some of them haven't but it's okay, it's just all practicing. Um, I feel like this grape though, this lone grape, kind of doesn't really match with the rest of the painting. And I'd say this is my final piece because if I think I work on uh, paintings too much I'll kind of get like sick of it um, and I need to move on with this project so anyway I'm really like I'm really happy with the figs it I wanted to tackle the figs just one more time before I completely gave up on them and it, I feel like after doing the grapes I had a way better understanding of how to mix colors how to like the wet on wet technique um, t to get this especially this shade because this part is actually very very detailed and kind of hard to get all the detail in with watercolours because just the nature of watercolours it kind of mixes very easily when you add water so when you're adding layers of watercolour on top of 
dried layers. Sometimes the dried layers react reactivate, so that's why it gets a bit tricky. And um, and also with figs, they just have lots and lots and lots of different shades within the fruit. So, which is beautiful, but also very hard to paint. And the kiwis, I just, just, I don't know what happened. I just couldn't understand it. I don't think they're that bad, but they don't look realistic. They don't, I feel like next to this, they don't look as good as this. But, um, again, it's just practicing, and I think I learned a lot from doing this anyway. So, yeah. Thank you for watching my video, I hope this has inspired you to get into painting yourself and see you in the next video, bye!